Welcome to News 24's election coverage for 2019. I'm joined in our studios in Auckland Park by Darby Scores, who will be analyzing the elections for us on the 8th of May. Darby, thank you very much for joining us. Great to be here. Darby, let's talk about uh, the election in general terms. Everyone's very excited. I know you are very excited. I'm very excited. Uh, it's going to be our sixth general election yeah. since 1994. We've seen a couple of very strong trends emerge since 1994 amongst, or, uh, as far as the ANC goes, as far as the opposition goes. What's been the, your biggest trends that you've seen develop over the last 25 years running into the general election on uh, Wednesday the 8th of May? So I think two key trends. Turnout in South Africa is getting lower and lower with every election campaign. Um, and I think a critical question will be, what level of turnout do we have? We're anticipating something like 70%, which is a little bit less than the 72% it was last time. Um, and then very importantly within that 70%, who actually turns out, who is it made up of? Um, and what exactly is the shape of the electorate? Um, in the last election, suburban voters were disproportionate, mm. uh, kind of were represented in a disproportionate way in the electorate. It will be interesting to see if that happens again. So that's the one, I think, key trend for this, for this election. And then the other one is just, um, you know, particularly in the last five years or six years or so, there's been a distinct weakening of the ANC. Um, core ANC supporters in the townships, black voters moving away from the ANC, largely to the EFF, but to some extent to the DA as well. Um, that's why they lost Johannesburg and Trane in the, in the local government elections. And I think, it, you know, at, at the very highest level, it will be interesting to see if those two trends continue. Mm, mm. I am quite certain the first one will. I think our turnout will be a little bit lower in this election. That's just a structural trend that's been going for a long time. The second one is more uncertainty. And I think that will be great fascination on election night once those voting stations from Soweto start coming yeah, in. Yeah. Getting a real good view of where the ANC base is at. Um, because, of course, that's critical for our future political trajectory. Davi, you, you sound very apprehensive, obviously, you know, given, given the game that we play in, uh, you know, there's yeah. nothing is absolute. Yeah. Um, but the ANC have been uh, drastically weakened since 2004. Yeah. Do you see a way back for them? That's a fantastic question. Um, I mean, given the, 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 the years of corruption and yeah. state capture and the bad press that they've consistently had over the last couple of years. I will be frank and say I do not know. But I can construct a scenario that is feasible, mm. that is a way back for them, which is this idea of the new dawn rejuvenation, right? Um, if Cyril Ramaphosa is able to pull off a good election victory um, and is able to actually clean the institutions of the party, clean the institutions of the state, um, and get the ANC to um, function as I think some people would like them to, um, maybe. Having said that, I think it's, it's electorally, um, I get the sense that the horse is bolted to some mm. extent um, because I think there's a number of key things to say. The one thing is you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, the ANC performed at that level yes. because opposition in townships in the black electorate to the ANC was essentially insignificant. It wasn't very well organized. Mm. Um, it mm. wasn't particularly legitimate mm. Um, mm. and it wasn't very well funded and didn't have a clear message. And that's changed, hasn't That has it? changed massively and I think, I think we must just appreciate the journey the country has, has gone on to get to this point. In 2009, COPE emerged from nowhere yes. and was actually the first party to legitimize opposition to the ANC in the townships to some extent. Then in 2011, the EFF came around, did really, really well and further legitimize this idea of voting against the ANC in those parts of the country, right? And I think, I think that idea of it being open to voting for a different party that is not the ANC, if you're a traditional ANC mm, voter, mm. that idea, it, it's come and gone, right? Mm, I think people mm. are now, a, a large portion of the electorate is now thinking very seriously about who to vote for every time. And Whereas in the past, it was almost unthinkable, wasn't it? it I mean, unthinkable is not the word that I would use, but they just weren't particularly credible <laughs> options, right? Okay. And because there were no credible options, it hadn't been legitimized yeah. on a large scale. But now there are people in opposition t-shirts walking around in townships all the time where it wasn't the case before. So I think that is one thing that's significantly changed. Mm. The other thing I think that is also true and needs to be mentioned is that the, the state capture era and everything that's come out in the last three or four years um, has no doubt kind of structurally scarred the ANC brand in South Africa. So even in the recovery scenario, the ANC will have to work extremely hard to recover their brand equity. The, so their brand equity has been hurt by what's happened in the last five to ten years. And, and all the polling shows it, all the election results show it, it's, it's undeniable. And then I think the third point about this idea of a weaker ANC over the last decade is, you know, in, in democracies, there's just, and it's a very well-studied phenomenon, it's not just here, it's all over the world, there's something that happens when a party governs for 20 years mm. or 25 mm. years, or in the ANC's case, maybe sometime in the near future for 30 years, 
is that there is just a natural change gravity that starts forming an electorate. People see elections as a chance to change. Yes. And the ANC was the change vehicle. And I think for many people still is the change vehicle in South Africa. But there's a growing portion of the electorate that I think are starting to ask legitimate yes. questions about whether the ANC actually is still the most effective change vehicle. They're just simply getting tired of, of the same old faces and the same party. And, and I think this change gravity is a massive challenge for the ANC to overcome. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think those are the three key drivers of weakening. Can it be overcome? I guess, yes, um, but it will take immense work. And I think this election will give us a very clear indication of whether it can be overcome or not. Because if the ANC overperforms our expectations and does really well, mm. it would mean that the fact that Cyril Ramaphosa is now leading the party is um, at least uh, publicly trying to clean up the party, talking about um, addressing corruption and all these issues. It would have, mean, it would have meant that voters believe that yeah. and they're at least willing to give the ANC another chance and probably the ANC has more longevity than we've yeah. mentioned. But... If the ANC underperforms our expectations and comes in at something like the 2016 local government election level, um, then I think we are going to have quite a clear indication from the electorate that there is a structural trend at play, these trends that I just discussed, um, that is weakening the ANC over time. And I think we are then well and truly on our way to competitive electoral democracy in South Africa. Um, and then it becomes a, a very interesting discussion about you know, how long is the ANC yeah. still going to be above 50? Uh, what happens when the ANC gets to 48 nationally, et cetera, et cetera. And those will be very complex discussions for not this election, but some future election if the trend continues. You can quite conceivably see the slippery slope getting even slippier, slippier more slippery for them when they enter the realms of the mid-50s. Absolutely. Um, and I think, I think there's, there's a lot of political research and actually non-political branding research as, as well, which has to do with this idea of, of critical mass, mm. of within a particular market, once a brand reaches a certain level of support, it tends to grow exponentially from there. And I think what we're seeing, particularly with the EFF and the black electorate, is they're starting to reach that critical mass point of 15% in the townships, 16% in the townships, 17% in the townships. And there's actually been a lot of studies about mm. this. The magical number, theoretically, is something like 18%. And the DA is what, 8, 9, 10%, right? So I think they, they, there's a risk for the, for the ANC in having these opposition parties become more legitimized mm. in, the, in the townships um, and this idea of a, of a change uh, momentum building yeah. in the country. It's very yeah. possible. Having said all of that, I think this election will also give us a clear indication that the other side is also possible mm. if the ANC overperforms. Mm. Mm. Uh, Davi, uh, the big markers for you this election, what will you be looking out for uh, at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock? on Wednesday night, what, 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 should our, what should our readers and our viewers look out for? What are you going to be looking at? So I, I think the first thing is that it's very likely the NC will win the election, right? So I don't think we should be too um, excited or you know, uh, surprised if we say that it looks like the NC is going to win the election. The critical question is just by how much mm. and particularly by how much in the black electorate. Mm. And I think a, a, a key question for me will be within the black electorate, are the ANC performing under the 2016 local okay. government election or over? Um, and so that's the one thing that I'll be looking at very carefully. So the first one, black electorate. Black electorate is Good. the ANC kind of under and the, the national black number okay. for the ANC in 2016 was 71%. Yeah. Um, will it be um, less or more? Okay. And I think that's the, the one critical marker. The other critical marker is just at a provincial level is what's happening in Gauteng. Because I think, um, the, you know, the, there's, a, there's a very distinct chance that the ANC could be under 50% in Gauteng in this election. It's going to be tight either way. And I think it's clear they'll be the largest party in Gauteng. Um, but there's probably a realistic range for them of something from everything from like 46 mm, to mm. about 53 as possible in my mind. So that's going to be the big earthquake this election, or it could be potentially. That will be, I think, the major focal point. And then you, you hear rumors about what's happening in the Northern Cape. So yes. there's a lot of people doing pr private polling out there in the Northern Cape. I don't think it's very reliable and easy to poll. Um, but there are polls coming out showing the ANC close to 50 or even under 50 in the Northern Cape. Um, I simply don't know. We'll have to wait and see for the results. Um, but there's, um, there's kind of a growing conversation that there's a possibility that the Northern Cape may be in play in this election. And we'll have to watch that one quite closely as well. And then I think the final one, just for interest sake, will be um, how the DA is doing in the Western Cape and the extent to which they're able to hold their base. I think that's the other key early indicator that I'd want to look on election night as those suburban voting districts start coming okay. in. Is the DA holding its support in a place like Durban Bull? And okay. So your four critical markers is, is, is black voters, what's going to happen in Gauteng, what could happen in Northern Cape, and what the DA will be doing in the Western Cape. Absolutely.
Lastly, putting you on the spot, what's your, what's your predictions? What, what, what do the numbers tell you? Where, do, where will you be looking at uh, for the main three, three parties on the 8th of May? So I think we must recognize that there are 27 million registered voters and there are people who will make their own decisions, right? <laughs> so uh, in that, anything can happen. Um, so anything could happen. But um, we can also make educated guesses yes. based on assumptions and historic voting patterns, what the by-elections are telling us and what polling is telling us. And if, if I look at all of those things and I kind of build it into our elections model, um, it, it looks to me like an like most likely outcome for the ANC to be high 50s, so something like 58 or 59% of the vote. Um, having said that, I think it's a distinct possibility for the ANC to be something like 60 or 61 or 62. Um, and similarly, a distinct possibility for the ANC to actually underperform that and be something like 55, 56, 57. Okay. Um, so that's the, I think, the rational range when you look at historic voting patterns and you say, like, let's say nothing crazy happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like something from 55 to 61 or 62. Um, if something outside were that to, to, were to happen, then I would be the first one to say, well, I misread this election and I think I was a little bit wrong. Um, but it would require something, something significant. Yeah. Something, something big has to happen. There's a lot of people who have to change their mind. And there's a lot of big things that have happened in the last year. So, you know, it, it needs to be something along the, you know, something, something major. Exactly. It will ha something major will have to happen electorally. A lot of people have to decide not to vote or vo to vote mm. differently or to mm. do something surprising that we haven't mm. seen in by-elections or polling. So that's the ANC. Mm. I think for the DA, um, the high level expectation is something like 20 to 25. Um, and probably, uh, so 22 was the last result. I think something close to 22, okay. maybe a little bit higher. Critical question for them t will be the extent to which their base turns out and okay. sticks with them. We know that there's some threat of people going p potentially to the Freedom Fund Plus okay. or other smaller parties um, and to what extent they make inroads in the black electorate. And then I think the EFF we know will uh, will do more than 6.6. .6. The question is just will it be kind of 9 or 8 or will it look more like 11, 12, 13? I think that's... That's the, the, key, the kind of questions. And for me, the range for the EFF most likely is something 9 to 12. Again, if we look at the, the by-elections, the polling, the historic voting trends, it, it feels like 9 to 12. Um, of course, strange things could happen and we could be outside of that range. Um, so it's going to be a, a fascinating election. And we'll see you at the Results Operational Center in Pretoria, Davi. Thank you very much. Thanks. Davi's course will be at the Results Operational Center in Pretoria, analyzing the numbers for us, helping us to make sense of what is happening uh, during our sixth general election on Wednesday the 8th of May. Follow all our coverage on news24.com.